this is going to be really helpful to have when you have an image uh, where either the skin tone doesn't match the the base image with the target image, um, or if you want to change the overall appearance uh, as far as colors go. You know about filters from working with apps on your phone and so on, but let's see how those things are actually working. Um, so imagine that I wanted to put this photo of Let's say that this was me. It's not. Um, <clears throat> it's just a stock photo on this other stock photo that I found of a soccer player. So of course, you know by now that you can simply use the lasso tool. And I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool just to make this nice and quick. And get everything I need from this guy's head. There we go. And I'm going to copy that <clears throat> and put it over here um, onto this image. OK. Now, to get it to be the same basic size, of course, I can do a free transform. I'll rotate it a little bit. And then drag that up there. And I'm going to do some resizing. So it's roughly the same size as his head. <laughs> and that already looks kind of goofy, but um, we're going to make it work. All right, and then make that final. Don't forget to name your layers. Um, so I'll call this one head. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in, and this is where it's going to get interesting, because you can see very clearly um, that his skin tone, um, in this case, again, we're calling this me, um, even though it is clearly not, uh, does not match the skin of the neck here. Um, so what I can do is with that layer selected, now you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to change the target image skin tone, or do you want to change your own so if I just want to make this guy more tan, or if I want to make it uh, just change the lighting sort of, all I have to do is use that layer and select it. And if I use the wand tool here, obviously, well, it's going to select a good portion of his face. So we can just try it like this. This is kind of the, the, the cheating way, the cheap way of doing this. And I'm going to go up to the adjust menu. Now I can do an auto adjust. Okay, and let's just see if that did anything. Nope, that did not help. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to go back. So sometimes the auto adjust will actually help. This did not. OK, I, I did the auto pop. Well, um, when I zoom out, <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely better. I could, I could try to blend that a little bit. So that's another option. Uh, but again, these are just like like the, the cheap or almost like uh, cheating ways of, of doing this. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and actually play around with some of these, these tools. Uh, so the first one I usually usually will go to is uh, hue and saturation, and for that, you'll see this like uh, spectrum basically of colors. And if you drag it to the left, you can see how that would modify the color. It's starting to turn more blue, purple, green, and so on. If I drag it to the right, it's going to make it more red, and then green and purple. So eventually, you end up with the same colors. So if I stop like right there. In fact, I can just deselect this. Okay, you can see that he looks kind of sick. So I'm going to go back into hue and saturation and try to just put that back to zero. You can always type in the number you want to. If I go down to saturation here, see that it starts to take away some of the color. If I drag to the left, if I drag to the right, it gives it more color. So basically, if I want to make him like more of an orangish, like, and I'm not talking about like skin color. I'm talking about just in, ter in terms of the color spectrum. There's more orange in the in the target image than there is in the base image. So I'm going to go towards that. And then once I go into saturation, I'm going to be able to control how much of that orange I want to get through. And because his skin's actually a little bit darker, I'm going to go down to lightness here, and I'm going to drag it to the left. So again, still not perfect, but... <laughs> it's going to end up looking better. So you can play around with that. Um, and there's also this nice compare button. So you can compare it to your original. So I'm going to go back to where I was, dragging it to the left here, saturating it a little bit, and then making it a little darker, and then comparing it to the original. So that's one way you can do that. And again, when I zoom out, it's definitely going to look a lot better. OK, still not perfect. Now, I, I do have the problem area of his neck here. And that's where you would use um, an eraser. You could do that. So I'm going to go in and just kind of erase around and then try to blend that in 
using the fuzzy, soft um, eraser. And that actually doesn't look terrible. I don't like that the, uh, the there's still remaining hair from the original image there. Um, so I'm going to do something about that. And that would be simple. I would just go to that original image. And for that, I could use something like the clone stamp, pull my source. And just since there's clouds in the background there, I can eliminate that. And then you zoom out and you won't see that anymore. So <laughs> definitely looks kind of goofy, but you can see how I was able to play around with the adjustments and change that up. Um, another thing you can do in the adjustment menu is you can play around with color balance. And then that gives you specifically um, an option of your red, green, and blue because all web images are going to include different levels of red, green, and blue. And once you play around with that, you can really make it um, match a lot better. And then again, you can compare to the original. It's starting to look pretty good. I think that his head might just be a little bit too big, um, but not too bad. So try out the adjustment layer, um, uh, menu rather. You can also do this with images overall. Uh, so I've got this very interesting landscape image that I found. So I could go in and I can play with uh, different color options like that. And just by a single click, like these are more like your filters. And again, you can compare to the original. You can create your own too, um, choosing your original color by dragging this. And so I want this to be like a blue. There we go. And then dragging this and choosing the color you want it to switch to, make it a green, okay? So you can you have full control over that. Um, let me undo that. Uh, you can try out Vibrance and that, well, that's not gonna make much of a difference for this one other than kind of giving it a, a darker mask, making it much brighter. Uh, what else? Highlights and shadows, I'm not sure if that's gonna help here. Yeah, that just kind of washes it out. But you can create some really cool effects just by playing around with some of these and <clears throat> your, your levels. You might enjoy this one. So it's like your secret portal here now, and then you see what it eventually looks like. So the adjustments can definitely help you uh, change the overall appearance of an image or simply fine tune um, individual parts of an image. Try that out. Let me know if you have any questions.